What's up, guys? Drawing the defense here with a playoff preview for you of the Dallas Mavericks Utah Jazz upcoming series. This should be an exciting one, um, assuming Luca plays, of course. So, in this video, we're going to focus on Kleba as the pop man in order to get Rudy Gobert and Hassan Whiteside away from the rim doing what they do best. So, in this first example, we're going to be looking at Luka Doncic executing a pick and pop with Maxi Kleba. All right, so the first thing we see here is Trent Forrest is icing the ball screen, and Hassan Whiteside is in drop coverage, so they're forcing Luka into this area of the floor over here. Now, what Luka's good at is getting deep into the action and forcing the defense to commit. So, essentially, he gets both Hassan and Trent Forrest to commit to him fully before getting rid of the ball. So the Jazz have to make a decision here. Are they going to leave Kleba open? Are they going to have single coverage on Luka? Or are they going to leave Dorian Finney-Smith open? Um, so you can see Bojan's kind of going to have to make that decision because Trent Forrest and Hassan Whiteside have already committed to doubling Luka Doncic with Trent Forrest trailing and Hassan protecting the rim. So... Luca makes the pass to the pop man, and this is kind of the critical point for the Jazz. Is Bojan going to stunt at Kleba and stick with Finney Smith, or is he going to commit to Kleba, which would allow Finney Smith the open corner three? And in this case, he allows the open corner three because he got off of his feet, and that is a nice clean look for the Mavericks. All right, next time down the floor, we've got another example of the Luca Kleber pick and pop. Um, this time, the spacing is going to be a little bit different, but the concept is the same. So we've got the screen set by Kleba, and we've still got this ice coverage by Trent Forrest, except for the screen is at a different angle this time. So it's essentially a flip screen as a counter to the ice coverage. So what you're going to see is Luca is going to get to his right and then he's going to snake the dribble to his left once again what makes Luca special is make he forces the defense to commit to his drive fully before he gives up the ball so he takes him deep into the paint and you can see Royce O'Neal is going to be zoning up between Brunson and Kleba he kicks it to Kleba on the pop and you could see Royce O'Neal is playing the passing lane while giving up the drive He's going to do a good job of shutting off the drive, but now he's out of position. And now you can see Bojan is ready to rotate up to Brunson. But instead of making that rotation to Brunson, he's once again playing the passing lane, taking away the corner three, and then committing to the drive. And you can see Royce O'Neal is helping out on the, the drive inside by Brunson. And the Jazz effectively shut down that pick and pop. So that's good defense by the Jazz. However, the Mavericks reset it. And we're going to see Dorian Finney-Smith pump fake. And unfortunately for the Jazz, Whiteside bites on this pump fake. And then this is the the, the age-old problem for the Jazz is that they do not have secondary rim protectors. So nobody out of these four guys is going to protect the rim once Whiteside is beat on the closeout. So this is kind of um, worst-case scenario for the Jazz. They cannot have Whiteside pump fake or biting on that pump fake. They'd almost rather concede, you know, a semi-contested three. So this is going to result in a dunk for DFS. All right, so in this next example, I'm sure you guys are going to be excited to see that we're using the Jazz starters this time. So it's Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert defending the uh, Luka Doncic, Maxi Kleba pick and pop. So this time, instead of icing any screen, we're going to have Mike Conley trail over the top of the screen. And notice how good of a screen Maxi Kleba sets here. Really knocks Mike Conley off of balance and forces the switch to get Luca onto Rudy. And so Luca is going to attack this switch. And as you guys will see, he's going to take a step back and he's going to nail it. Now, um... Luca's not going to make all of these step back threes over Gobert. It's not, you know, particularly poor defense by Gobert, although he does get quite a bit of room here. Um, he's not going to make all of them. He's not going to miss all of them. But can the Jazz make any adjustments if Luca gets cooking? 
Um, one thing to note here is that we've got um, House Jr.'s guarding Bertans in the strong side corner, who he can't leave. I wonder if the Jazz can get away with putting a smaller player on Bertans because Bertans is not going to take them into the post despite his height advantage. He's just going to try to shoot over the top. Also, we've got Eric Pascal over here. He's probably not going to see the floor in the playoffs, so it's either going to be Rudy Gay or Juancho Hernan Gomez. Um, so essentially what I'm getting at here is can you have Rudy Gobert play more aggressively on Luka Doncic, force him to drive, and then have a secondary rim protector, whether it be Juancho Hernan Gomez or Rudy Gay, could they viably stop Luca at the rim, given that he's not the most athletic player in the world, but those guys aren't the, the biggest guys. They're not traditional rim protectors. That's, that's kind of my question here. Or the Jazz going to have to rely on Gobert stopping Luca? I don't like that as a Jazz fan because good offense always beats good defense. So it will be up to Luca to determine who wins that matchup, not Gobert. All right, so in this example, uh, you're into the more uh, traditional matchups of what the Jazz want with Daniel House Jr. guarding Luka Doncic rather than Mike Conley. On that previous possession, they were cross-matched, so you're not always going to be able to choose your matchups, but if you could, this is what the Jazz would choose. Now you've got the screen set here, and this time their uh, house is trailing and going over the screen rather than um, icing it. My theory on this, I think the Jazz are essentially just trying to send Luka to his right hand. So if, if the ball screen was set up at the opposite angle, they would ice it, and at that angle they're going to trail it over the screen. I could be wrong about that. This might have been an adjustment, but I think they're trying to send Luca to his right. Anyway, he gets over the screen, and once again, you see Rudy Gobert is in his deep drop coverage right here. And on those last examples, Luca would take him into the paint on the drive. This time, you can see he's going to execute a step back. So... Um, Essentially, instead of having that switch that we saw before with Gobert on DeLuca, House Jr. is going to do his best to follow him around this path and give him his best contest. Now, House is doing everything he can here, but this is way too much daylight for Luca, to be perfectly honest. So Luca is going to dictate what shots he gets in most, most situations, but... Um, like I said, if he gets cooking, what can the Jazz do to respond to that and make changes on their end? In this case, he does miss the shot. Misses are going to happen. Makes are going to happen. But if I'm a Jazz fan, which I am, I don't really love the amount of space Luka's getting on here. Um, and and what, what you see here is Gobert is in a drop. If Luka takes him down with his dribble he's going to command a switch and that's what the jazz prefer to do is a late switch is what they call it um, so they're not going to switch unless they have to so let's just say that Luca gets into this and he hits a couple step back threes doing this with house trailing him um, in that case the jazz might want to make an adjustment and instead of going to a late switch they might just want to switch at the level of the screen and that would effectively eliminate any daylight from luca um, as long as gobert is pressing up on him um, but then for the jazz you do have that mismatch of luca going at gobert with zero other rim protectors so you can see the the problems that luca po uh, poses for the defense um, even though he did miss the shot. All right, so we all know that there's a possibility that Luca misses time in this series. Um, regardless, they do have bench units over in Dallas, so we're going to take a look at a couple of plays not involving Luca as the ball handler. And to preface this, um, in case you didn't know, the Dallas Mavericks do have very talented ball handlers other than Luka that the Jazz need to respect and game plan for. So it's not just Luka, it's Jalen Brunson and Spencer Dinwiddie as well, which we're going to be covering next. So 
Here we're going to take a look at uh, Jalen Brunson, Maxi Kleba, Pick and Pop. And you see we're running a handoff out of the corner, but effectively it's a Pick and Pop situation where you've got Brunson driving it at Gobert and Kleba popping out to three with Trent Forrest trailing. Now, here you see that late switch that we talked about. They, they're not going to switch unless they have to, but Brunson takes him into the paint, which is as far as he's going to go, and then Trent Forrest is going to retreat back to Kleba to take away the shot. Now we see a switch situation with Brunson. He's going to try to attack Gobert. So he shakes and bakes him, and then gets him up in the air, and now this is exactly perfect basketball. This is what you do when you get your defender in the air is you run a give and go because you picked up your dribble. You can't dribble anymore, but your defender is at a complete disadvantage. You throw it to your teammate and you drive expecting the ball back. The Mavs execute this perfectly and get a layup out of it. Now, I'm a big Rudy Gobert fan as a Jazz fan. And he's usually a fantastic defender. But this is one of those rare circumstances where Rudy Gobert is playing poor defense. The Jazz cannot afford him to make mistakes like this in a playoff series. Because once you get up off of your feet, you're out of the play. You can't affect anything. And you're beat at that point. So even if Gobert is going to give Brunson a little bit of daylight on that three um, and Brunson can hit those shots, you still want to give up a, a semi-open three versus a layup like this. So that's just one example of what Brunson can do to the Jazz, just getting switched on to, to Gobert and going to work.